Recording, recording, recording. We're good this time. Oof. What is up, everyone? My name is Ross, and if you're new here and you want to learn more about Photoshop, photography, and other various forms of multimedia witchcraft, I highly suggest you hit the subscribe button down below today and turn on the bell notification so you don't miss a thing. Today, I'm excited once again because have you ever been in a situation where you thought you've taken the perfect picture but it's missing something, some sort of maybe atmosphere or some ambiance or some lighting or just plain light rays in general? Well, today we've got you covered. I'm going to show you how to achieve these beautiful light rays in Photoshop using one layer. You can get it done in one layer, but I'm going to show you, of course, how we go above and beyond and layer different effects on top of it to get a beautiful end result. So without further ado, we're going to hop into Photoshop and get started. This is our after image. This is what we're going to be getting, and this is what we're starting with. So before I begin, I just want to say thank you for all the feedback. I haven't been getting much feedback, but the feedback that I've gotten is very important to me. And one of the feedbacks that I've got, is that even English? One of the feedbacks? Some of the feedback that I've gotten is to include the image that I'm working on in the description below so that you can follow along. That's a great suggestion, and today I'm going to do it. If it's not in there, slap me up and let me have, have it in the comment section because I'm going to try to do, the, do that from now on out. From now on? Just from now on, I'm going to try to do that. So this image should be linked below. I got from unsplash.com. I'm going to oop. Open, I'm going to open a new document and just paste this in to start all fresh. And you can see this image is all hamburger and not hot dog. If you don't get that reference, you did not grow up in the 90s. But it's in a landscape mode versus portrait mode. And I'm like in portrait mode. So the way that I do anything in Photoshop to achieve my cropping or framing is to use just that, the crop tool. So I'm going to hit C to bring up the crop tool. And using our rule of thirds, I'm just going to pull up and put that shark on the bottom third. Now you'll see I've got my ratio, ratio set over here or locked to 4 by 5 or 8 by 10 I do that because I believe that's Instagram's just default uh, portrait ratio. And I, I just like the look that it gives. It gives a pleasant look to the eye. So I'm going to do that. And now you can see we have a problem here. We have some uh, background that we need to fill. Well... Photoshop's got a tool for that. They got you covered. We're going to hit J to duplicate our back background layer and hit M to bring up the marquee selection tool. If not, you can just go over here and select it. It's right there. So I'm just going to grab this little chunk here. I'm going to hit Shift Delete, and that's going to bring up a fill dialog box. Make sure it's set to Content Aware Fill and hit OK. This should fill the background uh, pretty nicely, but as you can see, it kind of left some artifacts and didn't do a great job. So I'm going to undo this and go Edit, Content Aware Fill, and see if I get a better result. You might call me crazy, but sometimes I get a better result doing this. And you can see from the preview, I should get a better result. But to use this tool to its fullest, I can mask out anything that I don't want the algorithm to pick up in that Content Aware, aware Fill um, algorithm, if that makes sense. So by masking this out, it's saying, hey, basically extend this background, but ignore this section because it's irrelevant to what we need to get done here today. So I'm going to hit OK and see if this does a better job. And it does, just like that. So once again, I'm showing this because there's multiple ways to achieve the same thing in Photoshop, and this is just one of those ways. I'm going to hit Command-D to deselect that, and then Command-Option-Shift-E. And once again, one of the other feedbacks that I've gotten is to also... Um, you know, scream out or yell out the PC or Windows shortcuts. I'm a Mac guy, so you got to bear with me while I learn those shortcuts. But on a Mac, it's Command Option Shift E to merge visible layer. That must be like a Control Alt Shift E, maybe in a Windows. I don't know. Let me know in the comments below. If there's Windows guys watching, let me know because that's going to help me learn. Anyways, I digress. We have now, uh, basically, we've stamped this visible layer and we have something fresh or our starting point, essentially. So from here, Basically, we're going to get into it. How are we going to create those light rays? Well, the beef of this, the meat of this tutorial is just using a new adjustment layer of gradient. You're going to think I'm crazy, but I'm not. Just bear with me. We're going to set this gradient. We're going to click on, let's back up. Hold your horses, Ross. So you can set multiple parameters in here, but the first thing that we want to set is our gradient. So right now it's just a linear black to transparent gradient. We don't want that. We want to click into here, and instead of solid, we're going to drop down, click on this drop down, and change it to noise. This is going to look really weird, but once again, bear with me. So we brought up noise, and then the next thing we need to do is change our color mode from RGB to HSB. This basically says, hey, we're going to, instead of using red, green, blue channels, we're going to use a hue, saturation, and brightness breakdown for this noise gradient. And what we want to do is on our saturation, or S slider, the rightmost uh, slider, drop it all the way down to nothing. And that, as you can see, it's going to take all the saturation out of 
our noise um, gradient here, and it's just going to produce a black and white. And if you're familiar with Photoshop or kind of a more advanced user, you know black and white is like the bread and butter of Photoshop for masking, for gradients, for a lot of lighting effects. Black and white's where you want it to be. So we can randomize this uh, to get where we want. You know, the, I want some kind of highlighty areas. This is looking pretty good. It's kind of a nice mix match. The other thing that you can do is uh, with this slider here for roughness, you can bump this up. And I like to go a little bit hot on it because, as I'll show you later, we can feather this and blur it in post. Or once we get this set up, we can't really sharpen it uh, too much after the fact. So uh, what my advice would be here is to go more rough and more sharp than uh, less rough because we can blur it later. So I'm going to hit OK. I'm going to hit OK again. Now this isn't looking too good, but to see what I'm going to do, I need to change my blending mode from normal to color dodge. And you can see this is kind of a cool effect, but that's not what we're going, what we're going after. So what we're going to do is double click on this gradient layer, or sorry, gradient fill layer. And from we're going to change the style now from linear to angle. Now this is just how the gradient is being thrown onto the canvas and we uh, the reason why I want angle I'm gonna hit okay no I'm not gonna hit okay is because with angle selected now if you just drag on your canvas you can move this around and obviously this is where the magic happens because we want the light source to appear to be coming from above now this is awesome because you can use this not just for underwater scenes but any window lights or light leaks through like trees if you're in a forest it is the, the power of this is endless you can do a lot with this and I'm gonna hit okay because I like how this is going so now, because this is an adjustment layer, we can work non-destructively in the gradient uh, fill mask. So if I want to mask out some areas where I don't want this applied, I just hit the mask, make sure mask is selected over here. You can tell it's selected because it's highlighted. And just bring up my brush tool by hitting B. And I can uh, resize my brush using the left and right brackets. The right brackets will make it bigger, the left brackets will make it smaller. And if I hit X on the keyboard, it'll flip my swatches because I want black, because as we know, black conceals, white reveals in Photoshop. And now I can just start masking out where I wouldn't want this effect to necessarily take place at. And this is looking good. And I should have said at the beginning, the, the first, uh, let's back up. This is what I had created originally. But because this effect, uh, you're not going to get the same effect twice, essentially, is what I'm saying, because we use the randomize button um, in here. It's it's just not going to produce a one-to-one, -one, so your results are going to vary every time you do this. And I actually like this one a lot better, because I got some nice highlights coming in uh, in different areas. But I can mask some of this out, and we can go to town on how we want this to be shown. So this is actually looking really good. I like it a lot better than my first edit that I did for my dry run before I turned on the video camera. And from here, if we want to enhance this now, what I would do is I'm going to right click this and convert it to a smart object. The reason why I want to do this is because now I can do a filter, blur, motion blur. I'll just bring this up. And you can see now what that effect is doing. It's going to blur this for us and we can make it more or less. I kind of like it a little bit less. I like where that's at. I'm going to hit OK. And also from here, if we want to enhance this a little bit further, let's just add some more layers on top of this, more adjustment layers. I'm going to add a new levels adjustment on top of it. Make sure we clip it. And the way we clip it is you can just hold Alt or Option on a Mac. Oh, I did it reverse. I did the, I did the PC or the Windows uh, a shortcut. So on a Mac, it's Option. On a Windows, I believe it is an Alt. Alt click and it's gonna clip it uh, here. The other way that you can do that is just right click and do create clipping mask. Once again, multiple ways to do things in Photoshop. Now with that done, I've switched out my uh, layout over here. My levels is now over here. My properties is under my navigator too. Actually, I'm liking this layout, how I've got my windows laid out. If you don't see properties, you're gonna to need to go to window and make sure properties is uh, active. For you, it might be over here somewhere, but because I'm doing these videos, I like the screen real estate that I get. Uh, by putting this onto my left side because, I don't know, it just evens it out and makes it more pleasing to the eye. So, back on track here. What what can we do with the levels? Well, we can basically just uh, enhance the brightness and the darkness. Basically add contrast to um, those light leaks or those light rays. And I don't want to go too overboard, but I do want to bring it in a little bit. Maybe brighten it up overall. And that's looking pretty pretty good actually so from here if we want to take it one step further my advice would be add a new hue and saturation adjustment layer and make sure it's clipped again by holding alt or option and clicking and then I'm just gonna hit colorize I'm gonna pull up my saturation and put this into the blues 
I don't want to go that overboard. We can maybe darken it. But you can see it. You can add a little bit of a color color tint or hue to it. That's looking pretty good. Let me drop it a little bit. This is before and after. I guess it just kind of enhances that uh, the brightness once again. But as you can see, once you get that first gradient fill layer down, you know, this, this uh, image is your oyster. Do with it what you want. So from here, what should I do? What did I do on this last one? Oh, I have a, an action I've created which doesn't apply to this, but uh, it actually works. So I'm going to show you what that is. And if you want to know how to make this action or you want to know how I make my it's a snow action, let me know because that would be a video that I can make in the future. But for the sake of this video, I'm just going to run this snow action that I've created. It's going to take a little bit of time because this image is large and there's a lot of layers involved to create snow. And I'll show you what it does once it's done doing its thing. So obviously this doesn't look good. There's snow all over the place and obviously I don't want snow in the ocean. But the reason why I ran this action is because I can turn off some of these and just leave, um, yeah, let's leave maybe those first two layers because I want to create that kind of uh, atmospheric, ocean atmosphere with like, I don't know, I guess that would be plankton or other fish or animal. <laughs> what would that be? Just sea life floating around in the ocean. I'm going to lower the opacity by hitting V and just... Um, a number five, maybe four. Four is pretty good. Actually, I don't even know if I like. Maybe I'll just go with one. Pretty much turn all the layers off. Let me see. Maybe we're wrong with this. I'm going to convert this, though, to a smart object once again because now that it's a smart object, i got to change this blend mode to screen or maybe color dodge. Color dodge is what I'm liking. And I'm going to add another blur to this. But I'm going to just do a Gaussian blur this time around. <clears throat> That's looking pretty good. So let's see, before the blur, after. Yeah, I'm liking that. So it just adds a little bit more atmosphere to it. And that quickly, we've got a nice light ray effect going on. You know, I'm not digging it. Let's let's see here. What's going on here? This one's more blurred. This one's kind of hot. Let's see if I can turn that down. That's looking actually pretty good. But if I didn't like how this is going, I can just do it all over again. So let's go, let's add another one. Let's go gradient. Change this from linear to angle. Click on this, solid to noise, go HSB, desaturate that bad boy, turn the roughness up a little bit. Let's randomize this to get something that looks good. That's going to look good. Pull this up, maybe like so, that's okay. Change it to color dodge. Now obviously this is pretty intense. Double click on this again because I need to kind of move it so it aligns. That is looking really, really good. I'm going to convert this, though, once again to a smart object because I want to blur this. It's, it's too sharp. But like I said in the beginning, I, I edge on the or air on the side of making it too sharp because we can, we can easily blur it down the road. But adding that sharpness back in if we needed it is not really, uh, it's not too easy to do. I'm gonna, there we go. This is looking fantastic. That is looking good. So from here, the last thing I would do to tie this image all together is just add kind of a custom vignette. And the way that I do that, maybe this will be an, uh, a longer tutorial in the future. I'm just going to add a curves adjustment layer. And I'm going to option or, no, command? Command or control click, I believe, on a, a Windows, this uh, RGB layer. Because that's going to load like a, a, basically it's kind of like a lumin luminosity mask, I believe. I'm going to delete the mask that's there and mask it. Change this bad boy to hard light, invert that. And you can see I've got kind of a, a cool, very contrasty look going on. I'm going to group that, though, so I can mask on top of it. And I'm going to a very large, soft brush, mask this out. And boom goes the flipping dynamite. Look at how awesome this image is. I'm going to zoom out a little bit. This is what we started with, and this is where we got. Guys, it's that simple. There's a lot of the ways to do certain things in Photoshop, but this is the easiest way that I've found to add some fake light rays. You can do it with sea uh, images, like underwater images. The forest images are awesome for this because you can get those light leaks through trees. Just window rays, too. This is the, the image I was going to use today, but I wasn't digging it. It wasn't too, it didn't have that impact that an underwater scene has. But this is the before image, and this is the after image. And once again, uh, to add to that realism, all I did is add some some dust layers in here, if you can see that turning on and off. And just adding that atmosphere really helps it pop. Obviously, my masking wasn't good. You can see the edges. But that is how you do it, guys. That's how you add fake light rays in Photoshop. It's that easy, that simple. 
I hope you've liked this. I hope you learned something. If not, let me know. If you did, let me know. If you want to learn something specific in the future, also let me know. And as always, I appreciate your feedback. So if you have any, let me know. That's a lot of let me knows. But hey, my name is Ross, and I'll see you guys next week. <laughs>